From picking up Len Wiseman, who's a terrible director, to Chad Stahelski stepping away from the project, this is how Ballerina might ruin the John Wick franchise. The most obvious problem with the film is Len Wiseman. He's just a bad filmmaker, really. So far, he's only directed four good movies, and none of them have been too impressive. But if I had to pick, the best of them were probably the first two installments of the Underworld franchise, and to be honest, they might have done fairly well at the box office. But there was nothing memorable about them. The other movies he's worked on were Die Hard, Live Free, and the 2012 remake of Total Recall. You guys probably wouldn't have even remembered these last two if I hadn't mentioned them. So far, the John Wick series has been a work of art with breathtaking settings, all too realistic action, and immaculate direction. But Wiseman's introduction might throw all of that out the window. Making a spin-off is not the issue here, guys. A lot of spin-offs have done pretty well, but couldn't the studio hire something else for the job? What makes the choice of Wiseman even more baffling is that Ballerina is supposed to be a female-centric story, and there are a number of extremely talented filmmakers who would have been better suited in the director's chair. This just feels wrong on so many levels. Wiseman might be the least of their worries, though, because there are a lot of expectations around the story. The directors of the original series, David Leach and Chad Stahelski, did a phenomenal job of showing just enough detail. They didn't overwhelm the audience with a lot of information, but chose to allow them to draw their own conclusions. That mystique made John Wick so compelling in the first place. In Parabellum, you saw a glimpse into the origin of Baba Yaga and his ties with the Russian Dance Academy. This was where John trained, just like other assassins, and it explained his ties with the Russian Mafia. This left the world of Ruska Roma shrouded in mystery, and even though fans wanted to know more, it was better left that way. Ballerina will start to unravel the mysteries behind the Russian Dance Academy, and in doing so, it might end up bringing up some stuff that the fans might not really enjoy. The whole thing won't be intriguing anymore, and fans might end up hating it if anything feels wrong about the story. Then there's also the risk that Ballerina might end up stepping on some toes. It might show some plot holes or inconsistencies with the original series, and that's almost always a recipe for disaster. Then there's also the matter of making the main character interesting, which is a pretty tall order. You see, guys, John Wick's story on its own isn't all that interesting. At the end of the day, it's just an action movie and nothing more. A society run by an underground government of assassins is a cool concept but it's nothing without a compelling character. What stands out for the franchise is the intricate world building and Keanu Reeves's portrayal of the character. Lionsgate may want to milk their cash cow for all it's worth, but the fact is that people were drawn to the movies for John Wick himself. The world of the assassins is interesting because Baba Yaga makes it so. The Continental, the Markers, the gold coins, and the countless weapons are just pieces of that world. And without Keanu's work, they're nothing more than set dressing. Now, I don't mean that Ana de Armas isn't a great actress, but can she bring the same life to her character as Keanu did? That's something that the studio must seriously take into consideration. And they should treat John Wick as a work of art, rather than just an intellectual property. It isn't just a golden goose that Lionsgate should be using for a series of spin-offs and sequels and end up with a bunch of disgruntled fans. I get that they can't just make an infinite number of John Wick movies, and Keanu can't be expected to be tied up with a single franchise. But why can't they end it on a high note without butchering a masterpiece? So far apart from Ballerina, a prequel titled The Continental has also been announced. A closer look at the world of Baba Yaga may sound interesting to viewers, but the studio must be careful with what they do with it. When the first Wick film came out, it wasn't that big to be honest. There were just a few passionate fans who loved the movie, and they kind of carried the franchise forward. So Lionsgate can't really afford to anger the people who actually played such an important role in making John Wick a global sensation. It may seem like anything related to our favorite assassin will be an instant success, but overplaying this could result in breaking down the whole series entirely. At least Ana de Armas sounds optimistic about Ballerina. She spoke to the media during the red carpet event at the premiere of Ghosted recently and promised the fans that the John Wick spinoff is going to be on really another level. The Oscar nominee also added that the film was really demanding physically. 
I'm not sure if Keanu got her to take jujitsu classes and learn all that close quarters combat that he did, but she still would have gone through some of it to do justice to that Baba Yaga action. Anna revealed that she personally loves the John Wick universe, and she was stoked to work with Reeves once again. Having starred opposite him in the 2015 horror thriller Knock Knock, she obviously has some idea about what working with the Matrix star is like. This also means that you'll get to see a bit more of Keanu on screen as Jonathan. Apparently, Dayar must love playing her character Rooney in Ballerina, and she also thinks that the story is pretty great. She sounded pretty excited about it because it looks great on the screen as well. Anna didn't say a lot about the story, but thankfully, Keanu has us covered there. He revealed that Rooney is a character who has been through a very troubled past. Having lost her father at a young age to an assassin, she has been seeking revenge on the killer ever since. But she doesn't really know what happened. So the story is based on her journey to understand her past and finding the tattooed assassin who killed her father. For those of you who don't remember, Rooney actually made a brief appearance in Parabellum. She was the ballerina who was being choreographed on stage when John walked into the Rusca Roma Theater, seeking passage. As you know, the Ballet Academy was only a front, and the director was actually training assassins for the high table. So Rooney was also one of those students who apparently graduated out of the Academy a little too early. Keanu also said that the events of the ballerina film will take place between chapters three and four of the John Wick series. It may be part of the same universe, but it doesn't really influence the events of the main films. As Ian McShane and Lance Reddick shared, their appearances in Ballerina is little more than just cameos, so that fans can make some connections between the main world and the upcoming movie. Apart from the John Wick veterans, there are a lot of other big names coming in. Fans will be pleased to hear that Norman Reedus is joining the ranks, even though his role has yet to be announced. Catalina Sandino Moreno is also coming into the universe, alongside Gabriel Byrne. Of course, Aina de Armas is the leading lady of the film, and Keanu will also be making an appearance. Angelica Houston will reprise her role as the director of the Rusca Roma too. The cast overall has a mix of new and old stars who are bound to at least make the movie interesting. The project went into production in November 2022 and since then, it has wrapped filming. The studio has announced that Ballerina will be released on June 7, 2024, but no official trailer has come out for it yet. The movie will also feature Reddick's last performance, as the actor tragically passed away in March 2023. Obviously, everyone involved with the film wants it to do well, but Stahelski couldn't care less. He told the director that he likes to help out in the beginning, then he just wants to step back from the project. Chad was referring to the ballet director here. He also revealed that he has worked with wise men on Die Hard 4, but back then, he was just a stuntman. Stahelski has a lot of respect for Len, but he also believes in letting people do their thing. The John Wick maestro revealed that when Wiseman came in, he had a lot of his own ideas on stuff like what lenses to use, how to coordinate a stunt sequence, you know, stuff like that. And Stahelski had already shared everything with him, so he felt like the best thing he could do was step away from the spin-off and let Wiseman do his thing. I can't help but feel as if there's a little resentment between the two directors. Stahelski is still a relative newcomer to the whole filmmaking thing, but he has found a lot of success in what he has done. Obviously, he knows the world of John Wick better than anyone else because he was one of the main reasons for its success. So with Chad Stahelski stepping away from the project to picking up a terrible director, this is how Ballerina might ruin the John Wick franchise.